My name is Christophe Boul. Thanks for watching. I'm the founder of Esper Lux. Joining me today for our Collector Series interview, episode four is Wei Ko of Revolution Magazine and Grail Watch. Wei, what's going on, man? How are you, sir? Good to see you. It's an absolute pleasure. How are you? Dude, I am destroyed. It's like the first day of Geneva Watch Day, so I'm so tired already. But at the same time, I'm exhilarated because like, there's nothing more fun than to be plugged into the watch industry at the level that which I think you and I are as well. Uh, to be both fans of watches, but to have the pleasure of working, dude, it's phenomenal. How'd you get into this thing? Uh, so I got in by accident. Actually, I know I got into writing about watches because of my failure at writing about sports and sex. What were you writing for? You know, like small magazines and, and but my, my goal was to write for the local newspaper hmm. and it happened that my buddy was the editor of Sunday Times in Singapore so I rang him up and I'm like hey dude uh, can I write for you and he said well you know it's fortuitous that you called me because actually I've got openings for writers in three different subject matters and the point was like regardless of what he was going to say I was going to claim an expertise in it yeah sure so, so what's the first yes thing? I'm great at that yes so he said ah the first thing is sports and I'm like bro what an extraordinary coincidence because I love sports and in 15 minutes, I'm going to go smash a bunch of sports. And he's like, okay. And then he said, uh, and I said, what's the second subject? And he said, well, um, okay, the second subject's a little controversial because Singapore had initially instituted a two-child policy. So no one was encouraged to have more than two children, but that was a mistake. One of the few mistakes that Singapore made because now we have a declining population. So we need people to have sex. So they'll repopulate Singapore. I said, bro, this is an amazing coincidence because this is one of my favorite subject matters. And in 15 minutes, I'm gonna go have sex with myself. <laughs> okay, all okay. right. <laughs> and then I was like, out of curiosity, what's the third subject matter? And he said, the third subject matter is um, watches. Because you may not be aware of it, but Singapore is tiny. At the time, the population was about 5 million people. But we're consistently the fifth or sixth largest watch market in the world. And we still are, which is incredible. So I said, I love, I don't, and then he said, stop, buddy. Clearly, sports is not your thing. I accept that, you know? So then he said, uh, but I was like, you know, how is my story in sex? And he said, how old are you? And I said, you know, I'm in my late 30s. And he said, you know, I'm not sure you've actually had sex correctly. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> that's worrisome. That's incredible, that's incredibly concerning. depressing. That's exactly. concerning. <laughs> exactly. It's like, all right. Um, and then he said, but there's a silver lining. Everyone likes their story on watches, so you can be a watch writer. So he said, pitch me a story. I said, yeah, there was this uh, Italian naval tool that has now become a luxury watch brand, and that's called Panda. So. Wrote a story in Panorama. That was my first story for him at the, the, the newspaper. Oh, okay. So, I, so how did that transition to collecting? But, but that's the problem. You know, you start writing about this stuff all the yeah. time. I mean, like, uh, what's you get high on your own supply. Exactly. Well, I think Hannibal Lecter said, first you covet with your eyes, right? Yeah. And so you're like, like writing about watches, and you're like, dude, is it just me? Or watches just so phenomenal because it's like that perfect sinosure between micro mechanics, a little bit of magic design. And then I love the fact that watches are perennial, they're passed down from one generation to another, unlike yeah. most other luxury objects. You never really um, get rid of them. And then on top of that, like to me, it was a profoundly like ethical and probably a little, you know, almost kind of magical device in that it only consumed the power that it was given by the human being that was wearing it, either by winding it or. or That's profound. Yeah. So back in the early 2000s, uh, they had launched the PAM 61. It was a manual wine Panerai using the old Unitas movement, titanium and a tobacco brown dial. And that thing to me was the shit. Like it was also that era where big watches were really in. I guess it's funny yeah. that we're now in kind of the reverse of that trend. Yeah. But I couldn't stop dreaming about that watch. And I remember finally I'd scraped up enough of my freelance writer money to actually afford one. And that was like, one of the most extraordinary moments of my life. Do you still have it? I do. Do you, do you recall a watch that kind of took it to the next level, right? Yeah, and actually you're, you're gonna relate to this. So I remember, now that I'm a full-fledged watch journalist, I'm going to Basel Fair, and in 2005 I went to Basel and I saw Max Bucer and Felix Baumgartner launch Opus 5, right? And Opus 5 was insane. I mean, it was like a three-dimensional sculpture on the wrist, retrograde uh, minute hand, um, like three-dimensional cubes, like telling time, but it, yeah. the watch that I fell in love with was the watch that Felix was wearing, which was the 103.03, yeah. right? Which I think was like the first watch for me from Uber that just like, they got it all like just brilliant in that watch, right? It's seeing the entire like Maltese cross system as well. And that watch was like, I couldn't stop staring at it. Yeah. So you've been collecting for a little while. Obviously things have changed. Like, and I, th I feel like the last three years, I, we've seen more change than we saw in the previous like, what, 10 years, Yeah. right? What do you think has been the most drastic change since you started until now? 
I would say the most welcome change is the incredible love affair that collectors have had now with independent watchmaking. Right? Yeah. Because I remember like, you know, even five years ago, independent watchmaking was still super under the radar. It was incredibly niche. In fact, it was kind of like the watchmaking for like super watch nerds, right? Yeah. And now when you like look at Michael Rubin's like white party and you see Kuzma like yeah. wearing a debit, wearing your, your, ex debit your thing, ex -ex right? Like, I mean, it's incredible to see like independent watchmaking going critical mass. Right? Yeah. And you see it with Jorn, a huge, in a huge way, yeah. right? But it's so wonderful. Richard it's, Mille before that, right? Richard Mille, yeah, absolutely. But now with Debithu, now with Uwerk, you know, now with um, Rexep, now mm. with like all the Atari. And it was really interesting because for a, a long time, I felt it was only, only guys that, like you and me that really appreciated it. Yeah. I finally, um, a few years later, got my dream watch, which was a 103.03, .03, but PS Unique black steel hexagon, That's pretty right? Cool. Which was insane. With a hexagonal sapphire crystal, right? Like uh, on the, yes, exactly. Yeah, so it was, yeah. it was faceted, but I didn't keep the watch. I gave it away. Oh, no kidding. And, and so I had another magazine uh, called The Rake, yeah. Right? Which is a men's elegance magazine. Mm -hmm. And like maybe the highlight of, of my like a career in that magazine was that I got to interview Ralph Lauren three times for our covers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the guy was so kind to me, such an amazing mentor to me. Um, really just wanted to listen to my life, wanted to, you know, spend so much time with me, invited me up to his his house in Bedford, actually brought me, just him and me, to his um, incredible car garage, show me his car collection. We were sitting in his all black, like matte black Lamborghini. This is a time when like it was <laughs> like super avant-garde. Like very few people had cars like that. Um, and he was giving me relationship advice, right? <laughs> and like at the end of it, right, I, I really appreciated it. But I, you know, I kept looking at his car and I'm like, Mr. Lauren, I have the perfect watch for you. So the next time I went to visit him in New York, I passed him the Uwerk as a present, right? I went to see him like six months later and I was like, hey, Mr. Lauren, do you like that Uwerk? And he looked at me and he said, I like that you gave it to me. Uh -huh. right? <laughs> Which I took it to mean like he didn't like it at all. <laughs> like, but, but, but he, so then, so then, like for a while, because I, I later became friends with um, his son Andrew. I was like, "Hey, Andrew, does your dad, did your dad ever like that watch?" And he's like, "You know what's funny was, at first he couldn't quite get it, then all of a sudden he loved it, right? And that kind of like triggered um, him purchasing two UR. I was going to say because Ralph yes, Lauren is exactly. an artwork collector, yeah, a very passionate artwork collector, and it just made me happy because it was like that watch." You know, because he's a, such a man of like extraordinary taste, like he looked at it and, he, and something spoke to him and then he became an ore collector. So that, that made me feel really good about that watch. And even though it's like, of course I'd love to have that watch, like I'm so happy it went to Ralph Lauren. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. How can you not be? It's yeah. a great story. Exactly. So I want to talk about a couple of watches that you brought sure. from your personal collection. Right. Uh, we're at Geneva Watch Day, so coming into Geneva with a whole bunch of watches is kind of a no-no at this point. But <laughs> these two watches I want to talk about. You you have the Dubitune. This is a PS Unique? Yeah, so it's a DB25 40mm uh, Quantum Perpetual, right? This was a watch that was born during um, COVID. So I don't know if you guys remember um, Clubhouse, but this was like an app that was started where oh, everyone yeah. would just get on and just talk, COVID, bullshit, yeah. talk bullshit, right? I was like, you know what? We're all stuck in our houses. Why don't we do chat groups about like different subject matters that can actually help out the watch industry, right? Because a lot it was a very um, uh, miasmic time. People were not really sure about what was going to happen. And one of the things I wanted to talk about was Debithune, like about how dope it was, about how it had such extraordinary technology, the number of in-house balance wheels that Denny Flagioli created, the triple parachute, the three-dimensional moon phase yeah. indicator. So during this call, um, a bunch of us were on it, and then my friend Shari was like, um, hey, wouldn't it be cool if like you were to do your DB25 perpetual calendar, but in a 40mm case? And then afterwards, um, Pierre Jack actually messaged me and went like, you know, I think we can actually do that. And I immediately said, bro, do you think we could do like a little series of those, right? Um, and he said, you know, he, he spoke to Denny and he said, you know what, I think it's possible, but you have to let us launch our um, version first because we have to amortize the cost yep. of making an all new movement because you can't take the, uh, the, the DB25 QP and just stuff it into a smaller case, right? So they did. Um, but true to his word and Denny's word, they offered um, us a limited edition of a few pieces of that watch as well with this all blue dial. And then I had like, I left one for myself, but then I was like, dude, that thing would look so insanely cool with a kind of blue case on it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I asked, initially Pierre was like a little bit apprehensive because he's like, you know, I'm not sure because we're trying not to make too many kind of blue watches. Um, we want to keep it for things that are very special. But then I you know they thought about it and finally they, uh, they, they were kind enough to permit me to have um, a PS Unique with that kind of blue case in the DB25 uh, 40mm. Yeah, beautiful uh, with, a, with a gear shade dial, and you also have you also have the starry sky with the with the moon phase. I mean, just a, 
an awesome watch. Yeah, and also I apologize for not having the right um, buckle on it. Uh, the watch was actually here for a service, so it was sent, just I didn't even notice it. it yeah, so. Okay, what else you got? Something new? <laughs> yeah, so I, I just picked this up, um, I guess about a month ago, but it, it's the product of two years of, of work uh, with Cartier. Hmm. So it's a special order. It is a Santos Dumont, so as you know, the very first wristwatch that was created as a man's watch was created by Louis uh, Cautier for Alberto Santos Dumont, who was like such a baller, right? Like this guy, imagine you're in like living in like the early 20th century, right? And instead of like showing up in your supercar or like your, I don't know, team of horses, you're like piloting your own like hot air balloon or dirigible cool. from rooftop to rooftop in like like yeah. Paris. Like parties happening, you show up there, like sling a rope, you know, and slide down. I mean, that's a real entrance. Yeah, right? for so, sure. that, so that watch was uh, created for this extraordinary gentleman playboy, um, uh, Alberto Santos Dumont. And it's an incredible demonstration. Like this watch is well over 100 years old in terms of its design, largely unchanged, and it's still so fresh and relevant. So I had really wanted to do a version of that with them uh, as a special order of 50 pieces for my Cartier collecting club called Le Flaneau. Mm -hmm. And they were incredibly kind to accept. It's um, a large size Santos Dumont, which is it's um, a misleading term because large for the Santos Dumont is actually very like elegant. You know, um, but it that is, watch, I, th I thought this was going to be a lot bigger yeah, when, it, when you had posted. I'm like a large, I'm like, well, yeah. make it a large, I don't get it. And, then and, I saw, and, oh, yeah, and normally good. that size is only um, quartz, but they were kind enough to do a hand on mechanical watch in there for me. Um, and then it's got a green dial with this beautiful sun ray uh, finish. Um, and it's got a Chinese uh, applied rhodium indexes in kind of homage to my wow, Very awesome. my cultural. Super roots. cool. Thanks, man. All right. So I want to talk about something that uh, we've been discussing for a little while, sure. uh, and it's it's, uh, it's a concept that you launched not too long ago. Sure. Tell me about Grail Watch. Thanks, man. Uh, so you know, uh, Grail Watch is uh, something I, I, I had always dreamt of, which was basically the idea of taking um, collaborative watches and kind of just bringing it to the next level, right? So the three watches that you see here are all examples of collaboration. Uh, the first one is a Ludovic Balura upside down watch with a dial designed by Ludovic's son, uh, Gabriel, when he was three years old. Right? And I, I think that that watch is um, incredibly meaningful, probably the most meaningful watch that we've ever worked on. Um, because uh, if you know the history of Ludovic, like his, uh, his first wife, Evelyn, um, had cancer mm. and he, you know, really they fought it bravely for 10 years and she eventually passed away. Mm. And when he found Flavia, his, his current wife, um, it was a bit later in life. And you know, I guess like with all things, they were really unsure if they would be able to have children. Uh, shortly after they kind of got together, they realized that they were pregnant. And the incredible thing about that was when they went to go see the um, gynecologist obstetrician, which they found on Google Maps, it turned out that that person was working not just on the same street, not just in the same building, but on the same floor that Ludovic and his first wife Evelyn had visited for 10 years wow. because the um, uh, uh, gynecologist obstetrician was here on one door and next door was the oncologist where they'd been going for chemotherapy. Wild. So when they came out of that office um, and they were told that you know, the pregnancy was great and they were, we were going to have a, um, a baby boy, um, Flavia turned to Ludovic and said, you know, the universe is giving us an amazing gift. Um, and that's their son. And, and it made uh, you know, such an impact in Ludovic's life as well because he was really wrestling with the idea of like, why have I created this brand? What am I gonna do with it for the future? And now that you know, he has a son, he understands exactly what it is to do with everything for Gabriel. So I said, you, know, mm -hmm. you guys should do a watch together. He gave Gabriel an outline of the dial. Uh, Gabriel uh, colored it in, and that's why this watch is the very first timepiece that Ludovic has ever put. Uh, Ludovic Balourat et fils, which means in, uh, and, and son, son in French. Yeah. So, uh, Aventurine dial? Aventurine dial, yes. Aventurine dial. Yes. And of course, the upside down, where uh, the uh, everything else is uh, everything is upside down, with the exception of the correct hour. Exactly. And in which case, exactly. it's in the it's in the right place. Platinum, I'm guessing. Uh, 40, Correct. 41 millimeter case. Exactly. Uh, and then, of course, the beautiful upside down movement uh, on the back. Part of the offerings at Grail Watch and the collaborations with Grail Watch. Indeed, sir. Very awesome. Very cool. Uh, okay, next one. So let's go from there, actually, maybe to uh, the Furlan Mare. Yeah. Right? So when I first saw 
Um, like my first Instagram post uh, of a Furline Mari watch, I just went crazy for this watch. I think the whole world did, or the whole collecting community did. Yeah. Uh, this is a watch that was created by Andrea Furline and Hamed Mari, and these guys like tapped into the zeitgeist of what collectors wanted, even before we were completely conscious of it as well. They'd gone and they'd taken like a lot of the codes that you get from the Francois Bourgel case watches, such as the Patek 1463 or Tassi Tondi, although that case was used in several different chronographs of the era as well, and created a contemporary brand that took a lot of the emotional value of that type of watch and allowed it to be accessible. So their first watches were quartz watches. I think they retail for about five or 600 bucks, although yeah. on the secondary market, they went crazy. Yeah. But since I saw my first Furlan Mari, the question that kept popping up in my mind was, um, how dope would it be if they were to make their first Swiss mechanical chronograph? So um, I approached uh, Andrea Furlan uh, about this, and then we both had kind of this idea where why don't we talk to, uh, like to me, one of the most knowledgeable and kindest collectors of all time, Alro Montanari, um, otherwise known by his nom de plume, John Goldberger. And so this is a three-way collaboration between John Goldberger, Furlan Mari, and, and myself. And yeah, I think the watches turned out to be extraordinary. So it's a trilogy. Uh, two of them have onion pushers because uh, that's the pushers that Auro really liked. And this is the exclusive for us as well. So that's a, a two-tone salmon dial with the famous Tasty Pony pushers because those were like so, you know, I mean, so attractive to me and so yeah. iconic to me when, when the Furlan Mari brand was born. And then if you flip it over, you'll see there's a Salita manual wine movement that has been uh, finished in a rose gold uh, treatment, which is what we wanted, plus a, a blued column wheel. And uh, I think the, the result of the watch was something, you know, just pretty remarkable because it takes all those codes that we loved about the first offer, but you, now you have it with the quality of a Swiss made um, mechanical manual wine chronograph. Oh, and I should also mention with a flyback function. Oh, the flyback function. Exactly. Very cool. The last watch you have here is really interesting to me because it's it's collaborative, but it's almost a collaboration of two cultures, right? Robin Talondier and Wilfred Buron um, are the two founders of an amazing brand called Atelier Wen. And these two guys are remarkable to me. They're like, so like intelligent that it's almost a little bit intim intimidating. Um, <laughs> they're both kids uh, that went to a uh, university in Beijing, right? Wilfred, incidentally, who's French, speaks like an incredible uh, Mandarin as well. Uh, and they fell in love with the culture of China. And in so doing, they discovered all these amazing competences that existed there and it kind of irked them a little bit that um, the perception of watches made in China was invariably of low cost and they saw so much um, beauty that was um, being made there that they decided to launch a brand and showcase what that industry in China was capable of. So they decided to create a watch called Perception, uh, which you can see here is an integrated bracelet sports watch. Um, this one is made of grade 5 titanium. Everything that you see in the watch is made in China, but it to specification made by Wilfred and Robin. So the dial is really cool because it was made by a Guilloche master who didn't have access to a Rose engine machine hmm. and actually had to create his own. Wow. And then after That's that, impressive. created a patent for this machine because he was the only one that had made it. And so every one of those dials is Guilloche by really an extraordinary um, Guilloche master. Then on top of that, they went and visited a case factory and that guy had never made grade five titanium cases to this quality. So much so that if you look at the bracelet, you can see that even the bevels are actually high polish as well, which is incredible to me. And then the movement is made at the famous Seagull factory, but to a much higher level than has previously existed as well. So the entire package of the watch was really cool. And it was also something that showcased the beauty um, and the craft that was available in mainland China. You know? Awesome. I mean, just look at the diversity just in these three watches, right? And I think that's also, it's a testament to what you're doing too, is you're really not Focusing on one particular niche or, or another, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're very welcoming in your approach to collaborating with different brands, and I think that's outstanding. That's great. Thank you, man. Well, you know, for me, it's just like I, I made one kind of like deal with myself that I only want to make uh, watches that I actually want to buy, right? Yeah. And so, you know, we've had um, many opportunities to make. Which different... is a problem. Yeah, so I'm pretty broke right now. <laughs> but nonetheless, it has been uh, an incredible journey. I have to also say like a huge uh, thank you to everyone that's been part of these collaborations. You know, for us, it's just been such a wonderful experience to work with people. Everyone from Ludovic to Atelier Wen to Furlan Mari, but you know, guys like uh, uh, Ressons and Alain Silberstein that were the collaborators for our very yeah. first Grail watch, to people like um, Gauthier and Bolsi from Trilobe who uh, created an amazing watch with us as well. So every one of those guys has just been so kind, so generous with their time and energy. And thank you for you know showcasing this. I really appreciate it. Well, that. we're excited. Uh, so a little special announcement uh, is that we're gonna be 
working together, collaborating together. Exactly. The details will come out, yes. but uh, then we've got something cooking uh, yes. for Grail Watch with Esperlux, and uh, hopefully it's uh, it's going to be uh, a lot of great things to come. Well, I mean, a shout out to you as well because you know you've created uh, something really special with Esperlux. Right. I mean, and, and I know it's a business and I know you sell, sell watches, but the amount of passion you put into community building, the amount of passion you put into content creation, um, I think you're pretty unique as, a, as, as a, in the retail space, especially in you know the region that you're in, in, in Boston or in New England. So, you know, dude, huge congratulations to you. Um, Thank you. And, uh, and great job, dude. Way, it's a pleasure. Always Thanks for making pleasure. the time. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for more upcoming videos with collectors. See you later. Peace and shout out to Swiss Watch Gang! Yeah.